every day you stay on my mind I be thinking about you all the time You the way, the truth, the life I don't wanna live this life without you Every day you stay on my mind I be thinking about you all the time Hi guys! Your girl is back again with another banger Anyways, hi, if you're new here you're welcome and for my OGs, welcome back. So my name is Ayolash and I am a Christian content creator based in Lagos, Nigeria. And I love to talk about God, everything. God, 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 God. And on today's episode, we have a man of God that is gracing us with his presence. And his name is Pastor Su. Hey guys. Hi. Good to have you on the show. Yeah. Like I said, he's a pastor. <laughs> so before we go into today's video, you guys please don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share. And also turn on your post notification so you get notified every single time that I post. So yes, for today, we are just coming to just like, and just be chilled and relax. Because I know that this is just like long overdue. Like, I mean, I published my first book last year, November. No, it wasn't November or I think it was October. Yes, October. And uh, we sold. Yeah, but I've not really spoken about my book. I really had a chance because life has just been happening. So today we're going to be talking in my, about my book titled "Having a Conversational Relationship with God." And Pastor Suri is going to come and talk about it also. So please introduce yourself. Tell us about yourself. Yeah. Hello, guys. Um, so baby, and um, by God's grace, I have a Monday to you know change my world and help people discover what God has actually called them to be and you know to do yeah, because um, first thing is first becoming which is which then leads to doing no one can ever do anything except they first become something mm. you know people are quick to jump at just doing stuff mm. so my assignment and what God has actually led my own heart to do is to help people become first so they can then do yeah okay that's that's amazing man of god yeah, so okay you've i mean during the course of hearing about me writing my book and all of that you got a copy of the book so what do you think give us a general overview of what you think about said book okay so the book having um a conversational relationship with god Luckily, a very powerful book because it's a book that actually opens you up to, um, you know, knowing what God has in store for you, regardless of your past. Mm. You know, knowing what God has in store for you, regardless of your background. Knowing what God has in store for you, regardless of what people, peers, you know, what they've said concerning you. You know, we have a circle of community where people don't believe in you. People see you as trash. People see you as someone who can amount to anything. Mm. But this book is a book to actually open you to um, the possibilities that are in you, you know, locked up on your inside, you know, that God has actually installed for you. Mm. Yeah. So that's um, that's my what I see, you know, from reading the book and from the author's mind. So, um, what particularly stood out to you in this third book? Oh yeah, so what stood out for me? Um, so many topics there. And I think these topics, they're like subtopics. You know, so there is a place that actually got me really blessed. It was a place where, you know, um, the book talked about being transformed. You know, like transformed. And, you know, the place of placing your mind on what god is doing for you not just what has happened because mm. i feel like many people think so much about 
God is actually doing inside. Mm. Because if we focus so much on the happenings around our lives, you know, um, we can lose sight of what God is really doing inside of us. Because the things happening around your life can actually, you know, can actually um, become validated in the sense that when it becomes validated, you don't get to see another thing again. Because whatever thing you validate is actually what you see more. Mm-hmm. Whatever thing you validate is what happens to you more. So when you validate the things happening around you, it kind of invalidates what is actually happening inside of you. And that's where, you know, you talk about trusting God, mm. you know, trusting in God. Trusting God means validating what God has said, mm. regardless of whatever is happening in your life. Validating what God is doing, you know, regardless of um, what is happening around your life and all. So that's like um, the homework for me in the chapter one. Mm. And the second chapter as well. Okay. So, like, how much impact do you think this book will do, like, to people that would read it? Hmm. For people that read this book, um, the impact that I see is majorly on on one thing, which is transformation of the mind. Um. You see, you are where you are today, not because of the resources that you don't have. Okay. Or the resources that you have. You are where you are today because of your mind. Mm-hmm. What you think about yourself. What you think about what you have. You know, in a view, I have my iPhone 15. That's the latest one. Yeah. You know, I'm 15. And your mindset about the phone is actually what determines what you do with the phone. Mm-hmm. So it's not just about having the phone in your hand, but what do you do with the phone? Somebody can have an iPhone 15 and not create one content. Mm. And somebody can have an iPhone 15 and not even take one picture. Yeah. Now, it's goals of iPhone for taking pictures. No. There are other things that the phone can do. Mm. Right. But one of the basic things that the phone is known for is that it has a good quality camera. Yeah. You know, very strong. And there's somebody who doesn't have a quality picture because he or she doesn't know the words of um, what he or she is carrying. Or he or she doesn't know. Have no knowledge, you know, in their mind what the phone entails. The same thing goes to what the book offers. So the book helps to unleash and open the things that are locked up in your inside that you don't know about. Mm. You know, the power of the Holy Spirit working inside of you. You know, the power of forgiveness, regardless of your flaws, regardless of your weaknesses, yeah. regardless of your mistakes. The book unleashes on how much. And the words of how much God has forgiven you, yeah. you know. And going through that book, I was able to really like, you know, reconcile with God, you know, over and afresh. Because I see that God is more concerned about my future. Yeah. yeah. I think also, basically, is majorly concerned about a relationship between Him more even than, okay, what He has called us to do. Mm-hmm. It's basically like, okay, yes, I've called you to be this and this and this. But there's also the place of, okay, me and you, the intimacy. Like, regardless of um, what you have going on, regardless of whatever you are coming from, whatever debt that is associated with you, basically, you're like, you are that um, thing. You're that person that can use to confound the wise, basically, like. Hmm. it's not like okay yes there's a special requirement to have a relationship with god like one thing that my relationship with god has made me see hmm. and was turned down in this book is that god is not necessarily expecting us to reach a certain level of attainment or a certain level of purity for us to have a kind of intimate bond with him because trust me even along this journey and I keep on saying this thing that till the day we die, nobody will ever attain perfection. What's your next truth? I don't think anybody will literally be like, oh, this person really was a hundred percent, regardless of whatever age, whoever the person is. But one thing God has made me see is that regardless of my weaknesses, is the perfection that I need. And that he understands that we as human beings, we are far from perfect. I mean, it was not what created us. A creator knows the, the nooks and crannies of their machine, what 
it can do what it can do so and then that's why they have advancement stage by stage there's 1.2 2.2 .2, this that, that, that. so you understand that we are not perfect but he wants us to come to a deep level of, mm. regardless of how i feel or how what i've done it makes me see that his relationship with me is not based on feelings yeah. it's not based on okay merit or whatever because regardless of what you do you cannot outweigh the righteousness that jesus christ laid his life down for that is basically the grace it's not by our works or by our minds but by the mercies of god and by uh, the righteousness of jesus christ so like it is basically like a wake-up call like even me when i read the book over and over again it's like a wake-up call to the fact that guy yeah, all god requires of you is to believe that he is and that you can submit whatever and just leave it at his feet and he will pick it up it would basically meet you where you are at Mm. It will basically meet you where you are. It's not. It's not saying that okay, yes, uh, you must have attained BSc or LLB or one to one. It will basically meet you wherever you are, even if you have nothing. It will basically meet you at that point, and it's gonna work. Because honestly, when God told me that submit your life, me I didn't have anything. Me that I used to club, I used to do mm. those things. Me I yeah. was in the world, man. Yeah, that's fine. But like, I just. I was like, you know what, God, I have nothing, but I have myself. And that was more than enough for him to work with. This journey has not been perfect. And mind you, that is the reality of it. And he knows this thing. But you know, weakness is is the perfection at the end wow. of the day. And he's there to basically help us to even shape our relationship. That's why along the journey of um our christian worker oh. this thing of the fruit of the spirit yeah. they are the things that develop us that's right. and that's not to say that uh, people that have um, gone far they don't still miss it they do oh. that's right. but is grace has been made sufficient for us honestly the best decision i've made was in my life is actually choosing you might say choosing god or accepting that god has chosen me because many times, because of Except all what God we yes, oh. all what we have in us, all what the baggages and everything, we are often at times we we are limited by the idea that God, oh, I'm too dirty for God. I'm too. I struggle to accept for months that God actually, um, that I'm enough for God. That oh yes, God can use me. God can come into me. I struggled. I felt like oh my gosh, that ah. The things I've done, I know God might not. But it really changed my perspective, my trajectory, I know. And that's where this conversational relationship is. No matter what I do today, even if I make mistakes, there's always the conversation. There's the place of prayer. I say this, mm. there's prayer, there's fervency, there's this. Yeah. There's also the place of God. See what is going on. There's a place that you and God are talking. You are even laughing. People will think you are mad. Yeah, There's yeah. a place of crying to Him, like, but, bro, they're waiting for so. Mm. There's just that vulnerability in having a conversational relationship with Him. Yes, we can pray, we can do all of that, but we can be walking and just be like, God, and hey, remember this thing. Oh, God, see what's going on. What mm. is going on? This, that, that. That's just the kind of relationship. There's always like, God is always like, you know, like that need when things are happening around us, we have best friends that we call. Yeah. To me, God is like that. Mm -hmm. Like, I like you said this thing, just like how, let's say, like, I think in center of us in Nigeria grew up in, dis dis in dysfunctional families that maybe the fathers were not giving what fatherhood should give and all of that. They were not acting right and all. Because to me, my understanding of God is that God is literally my father. Like the father that knows that his child will fall and he will pick the child up. That oh. okay, you guys can talk, he can scold you, he can applaud you, he can do this. That is my own understanding mm. of the relationship. And when you're you have a father, you understand that you understand that you guys can have conversations, not a toxic relationship. That's right. That's right. There is like a genuine relationship that you can be vulnerable, you can be broken. I will make you, I will make you whole. You can be, you can, whatever. But I'm mm. going to cover you. Wow. 
Mm-hmm. That is that's one thing that God really really brought to light for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's that's huge, man. That's huge, honestly. Uh, it's, that's that's really very very uh, um experience, you know. <laughs> yeah, it's it's really for I me. Mean, I'm also able to like see more light. So it's, I mean, you're you're the author, and you know, there's more light on the book for me. Yeah. yeah so really, really great. Really, yeah. Really so I, I, do you, do you, what do you recommend? Do you recommend people get the book? Yeah, sure, sure. It's a book that I feel like every young person. Mm. When I say young, I don't mean young by age. Mm. And I don't mean young by um, I mean young, okay, people who are hungry. Yeah. And they're very Christian. But even the funny thing is that I've had old people, pastors, like pastors literally reach out to me and they're like, in this book, there's something behind it that it could have not just been. Um, my reason it's most it is the only spirit yeah. is the, like the, mo, the, there's literally one man that every time she sees me it's like you know there's a deep message mm. that there's something that there's just this revival going on in her mind there's this there's that and amongst the numerous other people that have really gotten the book and I've really like and honestly even me as the person every time I read it it doesn't feel like I wrote because it's like I'm mean, instead there's more light that is coming to me. There's there are more things that I see and I'm like, okay, this thing. Because so that's one thing I've come to know that when something is under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, when we come to our natural flesh, like we now begin to see like because that point in time the Holy Spirit is the one giving the inspiration. You don't even know. Mm. So when you're now going through it, I'm like, did I write this? Did I write this? Did I write this? So definitely, I know that the Holy Spirit is... Because it was actually God that really gave me inspiration on what to write, how to write it and everything. Mm-hmm. The breakdown of everything. So I, I definitely recommend that you get this book. And if for me, I tell people this thing, that look beyond the monetary value. Instead, look at the lifetime value, yeah, the eternal yeah, value. Actually. Yeah, it has because it really has a whole lot of things inside it and the good thing is it's very precise and very it is. so and so this was an awesome conversation yeah it was it was I'm sure you really enjoyed <laughs> so anyways you guys um we've come to the end of today's episode and i really hope you guys enjoyed it so you guys please 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 and please don't forget to like subscribe comment share yeah. and turn on your post notifications so you get notified yeah. every single time that i post and i really pray that god blesses the works of our hands and he mm. blesses our heart and that people that will get the book yeah. that you take a whole lot from it and not just bits and pieces but it really impacts your relationship with god positively mm. so anyways thank you all for watching i love you guys and until we see and meet again and also yes also another thing again is that you guys should definitely be present for um uh worship and impartation yes, yeah. meeting be there. worship be and there. impartation without boundaries you guys should be present because he's also going to minister yeah <laughs> so you guys should be there because this meeting is going to be wholesome it's going to be really a lot and yeah. it's for yes. me there's like a purpose behind it i mean july 2nd is my birthday and this meeting is happening yeah. july 6th and it's just me going back to the very place that I met God because it was during worship as wine press that I had my encounter with God and I'm just like God I'm coming back to you to give you all the glory because yes life has been a whole lot and not 2024 has been but indeed he's still faithful like he, he really has really showed up and showed out for me and I just want to just be back in that moment of feeling God and just enjoying it. So you should definitely be there. And I love you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening.